outro cast. Cody, pleasure be speaking with you. How's your day going? Part one and part two. What do I call you? Do I call you CRC? Do I do the code E thing that you do on social media? What do you like to be called? <laughs> Just Cody is great. Yeah. Um, my day is going really good. It is the last day before my Route 66 trip. So lots of craziness going on. Um, I was actually like loading stuff and then my calendar went off and it was like, don't forget you have a podcast interview. And I was like, ah, so I ran inside and put some makeup on and here we are. <laughs> the Route 66 ride. If we follow you on social media, we see you're very active in the riding community. What was your gateway into having a motorcycle? Oh my gosh. So I was dating a guy and he got a bike. And then I rode on the back for two weeks. And then I was like, F this, I'm going to get my own bike. So I went and took the class and I went and bought my first bike, which is a little Honda Rebel 250. And that was the start of something really big for me. Hmm. Can't imagine there's a big crossover between people who do stand up and ride motorcycles. Am I wrong there? <laughs> no, I think you're right. Sometimes uh, I look at what I've done in a week and I think I'm a little crazy. <laughs> Well, I'm not calling you crazy. I'm just saying you lead a couple of different paths that are on the surface kind of unrelated because there's the social media game, which you do really well. I'm not going to call you an influencer, but you have influencer numbers, influencer skills, but you're not an influencer. There's the cycling, which anyone who knows the motorcycle world knows there's a lot of charity work involved in that kind of stuff. And it usually goes under the radar. People don't realize that people who ride motorcycles generally the warmest hardest people there are the stand-up world and then oh yeah you're this thing called an actor and imdb says there's what nine projects uh can't speak today nine projects coming out so how do you describe yourself when somebody goes hey what do you do <laughs> um i usually say um i'm an actor and a motorcycle enthusiast because those are definitely my favorite things and then a lot of the shows i end up doing like mine's mc get to incorporate both of them did you move out to la to be a stand-up or that was just an accident that was a happy accident um actually in one of my sets i talk about uh how a lot of guys had told me that i'm so funny and that i should do stand-up and then it's kind of this whole bit or whatever, you know, how they're obviously just trying to get in my pants and they say it to everybody, but here I am. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I kind of did the stand up thing for like a year and I played the comedy store and um, it just, that takes a lot of energy and a lot of late nights and a lot of partying and a lot of like begging your friends to come to shows all the time. And um, yeah, I kind of just got a little burned out and I definitely, love the motorcycle thing a lot more so i'm definitely putting kind of all my eggs in that basket now being a stand-up is kind of a nocturnal existence and being a motorcycle enthusiast is kind of a daytime daylight thing so did you entirely shift your existence yeah you know in my 20s i was definitely a little night owl and uh, maybe watch the sunrise because i was up the night before and now you uh can catch me sleeping after 9 p.m you know <laughs> i'm definitely an, an early morning riser now there you go so i first found out about you through your acting work and then i did the research and found the great online presence that you have so acting what are we allowed to know at the moment I don't want to do one of those things where I break the the quo, what you're allowed to talk about, because these days everyone has different rules. It's like certain people will go, I can't talk about my projects unless I'm producing them. And then other people go, I'm an open book. These are independent productions. Yeah, there are like crazy rules all over the place. Um, I don't know what they actually, are. <laughs> I know. Um, I have a movie coming out called Old Dads with Bill Burr, and we have a scene together, and I'm really excited about that. And um, other than that, I think I'm really well known for Mayans MC and the Breaking Bad movie. Um, oh, and then October 6th and 7th, there is uh, Jim Bob's Drive-In happening in Las Vegas, and I will be there. And yep, I guess you're right. There are things that I can't announce, but I can definitely tell you that I am going to be there. <laughs> Uh, Jim Bob is a horror icon. AMC and him have a long-term thing. In fact, does he predate AMC making great television? Quite possibly, yes. I, I think so. 
Good. Who who else is a holdover from AMC being American movie classics and just showing old stuff and being for different demographics? Now, didn't that all change with was it Walking Dead or Breaking Bad where AMC changed? I, I'm putting you on the spot here with uh, industry jargon, but I'm oh, just it's okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely one of those. It, it was yeah. So yeah, how how did you connect with the Jim Bob world? Um, I probably started with Full Moon Features um, with Charles Bands, and I did a couple of their really awesome, funny, cheesy, campy movies. And then they called me one day and they're like, we want to make a movie for you, about you, like you're going to be the star. And that became the Barbie and Kendra trilogy. And um, yeah, so we have something really exciting uh since the the barbie movie came out and we already had this barbie thing going um that's kind of how i got involved i've always done a lot of like horror films i feel like that's kind of the low-hanging fruit when you're a young pretty girl in hollywood everyone wants to see your boobies and people love blood and so i actually have a a, a movie called girls guns and blood and we went to this convention that was about boobs and blood and anyway i now have a bumper sticker on my mustang that says i love boobies and i get a lot of compliments on that <laughs> so so it seems like you're just easy to work with that you go with the flow were you that way at the beginning of your career or did you just mellow out oh my gosh at the beginning my attitude was kind of you have to say yes to everything and I remember being at a table read and I had gone on an audition with these people before and the producer was complaining about how a lot of girls didn't want to do this and didn't want to do this. And I was like, sir, you tell me to get on this table and dance. I'm going to do it for you. Like, you know, like, I don't know what I have to do to make it in this industry. But um, yeah, I just always have loved to entertain people and make people laugh. And I'm probably a little bit of a people pleaser, although I'm getting better at setting boundaries. Um, I just tend to say yes to everything. And that is why I end up on stage at the comedy store or getting lit on fire for stunts. You know, I'm just like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, you do have multiple stunt credits. Is that purely an accident? Did you just say yes on the spot? Or did you actually go through stunt training school? So when I started riding motorcycles and posting about it a lot, people reached out to me saying, hey, we need riders for this sh this thing. And then uh, I showed up and I was kind of just a background motorcycle rider. And then they were like, wow, your body type really matches the main actress. Can you do stunts? And I was like, yeah, what kind of stunts, you know? And then they're like, can you run and jump on this moving car while holding a thought off shotgun and shoot the driver and the passenger? And I was like, yes, I can. <laughs> and um yeah, they were like, can you hit Matthew McConaughey's stunt double off of a motorcycle? And I was like, yeah, I can. So that's kind of how I got the start there. I've definitely done a lot of really fun movies. Um, I think one of the funnest thing I got to do was um, in North Carolina, I um, was hung off of a pier by a fishing rope. Um, that was really exciting. <laughs> uh in comedy the yes end thing usually applies to improv but it sounds like your career is a series of yes ends definitely and i'm getting to that point you know where you have to start to say no to things um and that's really hard for me and so i'm working on it <laughs> do you see your career go more eventually in the production direction i said because you do already have the producer credits besides the stunt work yeah, you know, especially because Hollywood is on strike and before that there was COVID, I feel like I'm losing a lot of really important years, um, especially where I could play the young ingenue. You know, when I came out here, it was like, oh, I could still do high school. And now I'm auditioning. I actually just booked a role as like a 45 year old like mom and they're actually going to age me up for it or whatever, or they might even change the role to where it's like the young stepmom or something. But um, I'm kind of just like my castability keeps changing and, and screw it. I'm tired of waiting for the gatekeepers to be like, come on in, Cody, we're going to make you a star. And so I'm like, F it, let's just do it ourselves. What do I really want to do? And so the motorcycle kind of travel reality, all in the vein of like, Norman Reedus from The Walking Dead has his show Ride, and yep. Ewan McGregor has The Long Way Down, um, yeah. and a couple other, yeah, so, like, I'm like, let's do that, but let's make it all about, like, girl power, and also my dog's gonna come, so that's kind of our twist on it. Wow.
Wow. Okay. That really does show a lot of thought to, to, to where things are going. And the part that you mentioned about the age leading to the casting, I can't think of what it was called, but there was that Leslie Mann movie with Cameron Diaz and Kate Upton. And they were trying to present it as like, oh, she's so much older than her and she's so much older than her. And you're going, what are they, six years apart? So <laughs> that's a good point about the gatekeepers, you know, maybe making some bad decisions in the name of creativity. But in your case, it sounds like you are future proofing yourself. Is there also a podcasting element to what you're going to do in the future? Because what you just mentioned about the Norman Reedus lifestyle thing, he's turned that into a multi-season show. And there's always the question of, do you wait for it to be a pilot? Do you start off as a podcast to go straight to the fans, et cetera? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked because the ride that I leave on tomorrow, we it's a 10-day trip. And so I'm cutting it up into 10 different episodes and that'll go on my YouTube channel Mm. uh it's called iron pony because like choppers are called iron horses and then you know i'm like i'm a little guy so we're gonna call it iron pony um so if you go to youtube.com backslash you know at iron pony show you will see that i've already been practicing i have a uh, you know motorcycle riding in hawaii videos and i went to the madonna inn a charity ride in san diego so there's definitely been a couple episodes already like getting my footing getting practice kind of learning that because I am, you know, producing and uh, I have a friend that Jigger helps me film and then we send it off to an editor sometimes to half edit it ourselves. And, and we're kind of just trying to to make something so that now when we do this Route 66 ride, we've really like got it in the bag. And so I actually hired a friend for the charity ride that I did on Saturday, Chopper's charity ride. That was kind of our LA kickoff to this bigger Route 66 ride. I hired a friend to come film and produce that episode. And that'll kind of, we're calling that episode zero because we didn't like leave for the trip yet, but that'll be kind of the first episode and shooting for around like, I don't know, seven to 10 minutes for the episodes. And then when I get back and everything's all edited, I think we'll chop it together for a pilot presentation and um, start pitching. I mean, AMC is a great one because they already have Norman Reedus thing going. But um, yeah, that's kind of the game plan. But yeah, I, I'm all about like, take the content and then put the content out there because that's what we're doing it for. You know, it sucks when people write a script or film something and then it just gets shelved or right. people hold on to it because they're too scared to put it out there. I'm just like, you guys, I don't really know how to work sound yet, but there's captions on this video. Please go watch it. So there is a team Cody. That's what I'm hearing. Oh my gosh. Yes. I could not do all of this by myself. Thank you so much to my team. There's a lot of different aspects to that, but yeah, there's a team. There's a team Cody. Well, two quick questions and I'll let you go. And the first one is when you're riding, do you ever have music on? Because there's the two schools of bikers. There's the one that play the music so loud that everyone down the road can hear what song it is and know it. And then there's the people who go, why would I ever do that? That's going to distract me. I like listening to the engine. When I first started writing, I was super anti-music and I've been writing for 10 years. So yeah, I'm blasting music. I have a Cardo, so it's like Bluetooth in my helmet. And so I'm there rocking out, but no one else can hear it. And so cars will always try to talk to me at stoplights and stuff. And I'm just like, what? what? What's happening? Then the follow-up to that is, what music does Cody Renee Cameron listen to? Oh my gosh, as I'm sure you can guess, it's a lot of similar to how my career is where it's all over the place right now I'm really into the Hamilton soundtrack and uh the greatest showman that's like my pump up music before I go to something and I'm like especially in audition it's like this is the greatest show it's everything you ever want and that gets me like so pumped up and then I'll like bounce over to chain smokers because it's kind of like really chill like good vibey and then I'll go to like Metallica or Iron Maiden and then to Britney Spears so it's kind of all over the place so what I'm hearing is that Sturgis's demographics are going to be changing in about 10 years. And we might be seeing, you know, best of the 90s pop, best of the 2000s pop at Sturgis, right? For sure. Yes. Huge fan. <laughs> well, thank you for your time and really looking forward to what's to come from you as an online personality, as an actress, as a person creating their own content. That really sounds like a fresh take on things. The pilot that you're talking about doing that's going to be a vlog and then we'll see what goes from there but keep up all the great work there cody 
Thank you so much, Darren. Thanks for having me. Outro cast.